Um, so Dr. Dionandin, the report that I'm looking at, so it doesn't directly have to do with COVID-19. It kind of talks about adult vaccination rates across Canada, but it ties to COVID-19 because it shows the bureaucratic challenges that we're facing when it comes to the COVID-19 vaccine rollout. So I, I want to know, first of all, I'll just ask you, you know, how is Ontario doing um, in the vaccine rollout compared to other provinces in the country? It depends on what numbers you look at. But if you look at the rate per 100,000 people getting the COVID vaccine, we're in the middle somewhere. I think we're like 4,000 per 100,000. Quebec is 4,300. Uh, Saskatchewan, I think, is over 5,000. Alberta is around 4,000. So amongst the provinces, we're at the bottom or the middle of the list. Um, compared to the, the territories, they're doing quite well proportionally. In terms of raw numbers, we're up near the top because we have a more populous province, we received a greater proportion of the supply. But um, it's not getting to the same proportion of people in, as cases, places like Saskatchewan are. Now, in terms of the efficiency of the rollout, that's, that's still up for debate. It's unclear who's responsible. Is it provincially mandated? Is it from the public health units? We get these strange edicts from press conferences saying that the family doctors are in charge of informing patients, but family doctors have no idea. And public health units don't seem to be empowered yet to actually roll out the vaccines. The data management process is unclear. Uh, does each public health unit have its own booking process? Seems that might be the case. Or will there be a provincially mandated central booking process? I don't know. So the, the inability to get answers to those questions uh, does not fill me with confidence that we have it all figured out yet. But the fact that we have templates to follow from other places that do do this well, like Israel, for example, and, and some parts of the USA, tells me that we will have it figured out quickly. Definitely. So break it down for people to understand, like, what is going on behind the scenes here? What are the bureaucratic challenges that we're facing that is causing a barrier to just, you know, getting, getting the shipments and getting them out to people? Clearly, there's a delay in that process. Yeah, I don't really know because I'm not part of this process. But if I had to guess, there are divisions in administration. So across the country, we have federal mandates, we have provincial mandates, we have municipal, and we have public health units. And they're differently set up. Public health units are associated with counties. Municipalities are essentially cities, and they all report to the province. So uh, historically, public health units are responsible for managing things like inoculation campaigns and public health endeavors. Sometimes they overlap well with a municipality like a city, and sometimes they don't. And that matters because some towns are too small to have the resources to manage these things unto themselves, so it falls to the public health units, which are further confounded by things like LINs, these local health information networks that no one fully understands what they're doing. <laughs> So Ontario is a bit of a, a bit of a, a puzzle when it comes to healthcare management and deployment. So these are the challenges. Yeah, and and how has this you know uh, played out with the public? I mean, everyone seems pretty lost right now. Um, do you find that people are informed or, or not so much? They have no idea of what's going on with this process. Yes, people have no idea, and you're getting press conferences from uh, BC and Alberta and. We assume in Ontario, hey, that must apply to us as well. No, it doesn't. So the, the central information has been sketchy and confusing. The municipal information has been good. So where I am in Ottawa, for example, the, the press conferences held by Ottawa Public Health has been quite informative and straightforward. That's good. And I think what people need to do is listen to their local public health leaders in the city they live in or in the public health unit that manages their public health endeavors. That's how we get through this. What I'm hoping to see is that as we you know, shake the rug out and let things fall aside, what's left behind is that public health units will be responsible for this. They have decades of experience rolling out immunization plans, decades of experience. All they need are the vaccines and the resources to get this job done. And I think it can be done relatively quickly. So keep in mind too that we have yet to to enroll pharmacists and dentists and opticians and all these other people that are and family doctors of course that are fully qualified and able to give doses at their places of work. So there are all kinds of tools on the table we have not yet added to uh, our toolbox. Um, and it may not come to that if the public health units are allowed to do what they have done traditionally with the flu vaccines. 
do you think there's been an issue with transparency and the public because health agencies don't, local health agencies don't have the information from the province or are they simply choosing not to keep people informed? Or do they, are they truly like, uh, because every time I ask them, it's, you know, we're following the province's guidelines. We're waiting for further direction from them. Is that true or? Yeah, I think it is true. I, I fully trust local public health units. They're in this for all the right reasons. They're not elected officials. You know, their jobs don't depend on uh, perceptions. Um, what they want are the vaccines, the additional money to roll out the plan, and the go-ahead to start. That's what they need. What the province needs to give them is those tools and a, a, final, uh, a final blueprint template for what needs to happen. Now, we understand now that there are timelines for who gets vaccinated according to age bracket, which is fantastic. It's still unknown where the booking process happens. You know, whose online booking system do you use? It's unclear how the data is going to be managed. We don't want people crossing jurisdictions, getting vaccinated twice, or uh, our, our inability to figure out at what milestones are reached for herd immunity. These things are important. So the data flow issues are critical to me anyway. And if we're going to have these competing booking processes, one in Durham County and one in Prince Edward County and whatever, they have to coordinate at some point so we know exactly how many doses are getting into arms, where they're getting into arms, who is due for a second dose, which formulation they got, and geographically distributed where we have the most immunity. Mm -hmm. Would you say we're, we're facing a race against time here where people are just getting so tired, you know, they want to get vaccinated, you know, we've been on lockdown for a couple of months. And so, and, but we're, again, we're facing these delays. So how is, is time of the essence during this time? Time is of the essence, but not for the reasons you mentioned, not because people are frustrated, even though that's true. It's because we're racing against the eventual dominance of the new variants, particularly B117. So it's anticipated that B117 will be the dominant variant within the next couple of months. The longer we can slow that, the more we have a chance of vaccinating ahead of that happening. So our goal is to get vaccines into the right arm. So, you know, those most likely to be hospitalized and die and, you know, those most likely to be exposed if we can in order to prevent the next wave from being a painful wave. So that's the race really here. As, as, in terms of the race against people's psychological discontent with the pandemic, well, that's unavoidable. And it seems like we won't reach herd immunity until later this year at the earliest. So we're probably going to sit tight, most of us, for several more months because we're not high priority groups. I, I, yeah, I was going to ask you, what, what is the timeline looking like now, especially with these setbacks? The most recent framework I've seen says that uh, 80 year olds and above will start getting vaccinated in early March. 70 and above the month after and so forth, down to 60 and above by July or August. So for those younger than that, we're looking at the fall at the earliest, unless we get more vaccine supply, which is always possible, especially if Health Canada okays additional formulations like the Janssen shot and uh, the Novavax vaccine and AstraZeneca. If those start flooding the market, we can move up that timeline quite early. So uh, there are a lot of unknowns here, but the biggest unknown is when will we get vaccine supply and how many will we get? What, in your opinion, needs to happen to get us right up to speed here? We need more supply, first, first and foremost. That's on, on the federal government for the most part, is get us more supply. Nothing prevents the provinces from negotiating for more supply, but that would help a lot. Number two would be, in the min interim, build the data infrastructure. Get the booking system up and running and get the communications streamlined so that everyone will know how they will be informed about when it's their turn to go online and book. And the booking procedure must have uh, things like, uh, your obviously, information about who you are, who your doctor is to follow up with, and where the nearest vaccination site will be. Now, that might not be known yet. It might not be known if we have centralized sites or whether people are going to be driven to uh, drugstores, for example, or the doctor's offices. Um, that needs to be made clear. Will, will doses be sent to family doctors to distribute? Will they be sent to dentist's office to be distributed? That's unclear. So the communications part of this is paramount. Mm -hmm. More questions than answers, it seems like. I Always. really appreciate your time. Is there anything I missed that you wanted to add? Uh, nope. Okay. Thank <laughs> you so much, Dr. Dionandon. All the best. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye now.